This is a diagram uh, showing the circumaortic venous uh, ring. Note that there is a vein uh, ventral and another one uh, dorsal, and both terminate in the inferior vena cava. This is an anatomical uh, specimen seen from behind, uh, where you can see a retroaortic uh, left renal vein uh, indicated by the two arrows terminating uh, in the inferior vena cava. This is an example of a retroaortic uh, left renal vein. And note that and in this CT examination, a tubular structure that is interposed between the, the abdominal aorta and the ventral aspect of the lumbar spine, and it terminates uh, in the inferior vena cava. This is, uh, represents uh, a retroaortic uh, left renal vein. This is a circumaortic venous ring demonstrated uh, by selective uh, retrograde left renal venographic examination. The tip of the catheter is in the largest uh, component uh, of the venous uh, ring. Note uh, that in this patient, uh, the splenic vein uh, was connected uh, to the left renal vein. This patient had a distal uh, spinorenal uh, shunt. Uh, there is a uh, retroaortic uh, component uh, that is directed caudally and to the right and usually terminates uh, either in the inferior vena cava or in an iliac vein. Another example of a circumaortic venous ring, uh, note uh, that there are several uh, veins uh, that connect uh, with the left renal vein. One is directed cephalically and it is a lumbar vein. Uh, when patients have a retrograde uh, venographic examination and they stress or do a valsalva examination, one may get retrograde uh, filling in uh, lumbar veins. And uh, this is the reason that we see a filling of the uh, pervertebral venous uh, plexus. Note uh, a large uh, vein uh, that is directed uh, caudally and uh, terminates uh, in the left uh, common iliac uh, vein. A selective left uh, renal arteriogram shows in the venous face a large gonadal vein that uh, goes caudally. Uh, in this patient, there was no left uh, renal uh, vein. All the uh, venous return uh, is to this uh, large uh, gonadal vein.